In this video, we'll go over how to use a USB microphone, such as the Blue Microphone's Snowball microphone, in GarageBand. First, we'll need to set up an audio track. Right here, we have a virtual instrument track. Um, so I'm going to hit the plus sign here and choose the microphone. Uh, from this window, if the details are shown, you can click on this little triangle, you could choose to um, choose the microphone that you're going to um, go for. Um, right now we've indicated that we want the uh, the blue snowball. I've just opened up GarageBand's preferences. I did it from the detail area. I could have also done it from the GarageBand menu and preferences, but it's in this um, uh, window that uh, under the audio MIDI tab that I could choose the Snowball microphone if it's plugged in. Now if it's not plugged in, when you do plug it in, often there is a, a message, an alert message, telling you uh, that uh, GarageBand has detected that you're using a, a microphone, say for instance the Blue Snowball mic, and it asks you do you want to use it, and you would say yes. Sometimes when you plug a USB mic in though, you don't get that. You'll just have to check in the preferences. So again, the two places to do that is either under the GarageBand menu, preferences and then you would choose the blue snowball microphone as opposed to say the built-in mic or an audio interface so we're going to choose blue snowball and the other place to do that would have been you could open up the preferences from this detail tab by just clicking right here um, and then because the blue snowball can either be used as a mono or a stereo mic you can choose uh, whichever kind you want I'm going to go ahead and just say um, stereo all right, if you want to monitor your sound, you would check that. If you don't want to monitor your sound, you can uncheck that. All of this can be done actually in GarageBand once we set up this um, microphone track as well. So um, let's just say create. And now we have an audio track. And you can even see the VU meters popping as I'm talking into the, the Snowball microphone. Um, but this is actually not the trim control. The trim control is, is the uh, control that sets the input volume. This is actually the track volume control. So if you want to set how strong the signal that's coming into the microphone, you actually have to go here to the, this little icon is called Smart Controls. And when you click on that, it opens up at the bottom an area which are the um, digital signal processing plugins, uh, things like reverb and compression that GarageBand feels would be the best suited for what you've chosen. So for this blue snowball microphone, a, a USB microphone, it's saying it thinks we want compression, EQ, and a little uh, reverb, a little uh, atmosphere. Um, but over here, this little tiny eye for information, uh, or inspector I mean, if you click on that, that's where you actually have the recording level uh, and that if I think it's too strong I can pull it down and you'll notice up here on the VU meter it's not popping as much or you can pull it way up and if it uh, it pops too much you'll get distortion so uh, you know put it in an area that keeps it in the 75% uh, I think is a good uh, range you could also choose automatic level control and it detects uh, where it wants this um, based on the strength of the signal now, if you want to hear what these um, various um, DSP plugins sound like while you're recording, then you do need to turn on monitoring. And now I'm actually hearing the compression as I uh, tweak it. Uh, I'm hearing reverb as I tweak it. And I'm hearing uh, ambience, um, you know, low frequency cutoffs, things like that. Um, let's turn the compression on and put it up pretty high. All right, so I'm adding some um, some luster to my sounds but right now I'm going to turn the monitoring off and we'll just go with the regular um, recording okay so that is basically uh, how you set it up now you don't have to show um, those um, that inspector once you set your level if you want to get rid of it you can or you can just click on this and hide the smart controls um, just to clean up the track I'm going to get rid of this um, piano track um, delete track and uh, what's left is uh, is my audio track. So now, do I want to have a count off? If so, I click that. Do I want to have a metronome playing? If so, I click that. For right now, I'm going to turn off the count off and the metronome and just hit the record button and do a sound check. Testing, testing one, two, testing, testing one, two. This is a test. I'm examining the strength of my signal to see if it's in a good uh, dynamic range. All right, and there's what I've just recorded. It's stereo. You can see a left and a right channel. If I double click on this region, it opens up the edit window below, and I can see a lot more um, uh, both track and region 
um, settings that uh, I can add. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and rewind and just listen to sound check. Testing, testing one, two, testing, testing one, two. This is a test. I'm examining the strength of my signal. To, and it's a very strong signal. Um, it's perfect, actually, in the sense of that it's about 75% of the dynamic range of the system. Um, it's not so low that I can barely hear it. Um, and it's not so high that it's distorting and peaking out and clipping at the top. And that's what you want when you record with a microphone. Because once you've done that, you can add a lot of other things to it. Um, and uh, it, it's just a, lot, a good signal to work with. But if the signal is too soft, and then you have to uh, amplify that soft signal, the, the peaks, the high peaks, if they were very soft, um, are going to be very close to the noise floor. And when you amplify the, the peaks to hear more um, of the signal, you're also going to amplify the noise. And that makes the signal to noise ratio um, uh, not very great. So you want to have a great signal to noise ratio, uh, high peak, low noise floor when you record. And that's what this looks like. This is a good signal.